I'm RJ Gottlieb. I've been the driver of Big Red Camaro since 1987. Big Red is the fastest 69 Camaro in the world. With 2,000 horsepower, this beast is ready to dominate the road. Breaking 250 was a huge milestone. What do you do after you've done such a speed? We decided we had to look for a completely new challenge. Pikes Peak is a 14,112 foot tall mountain in the Southern Colorado Rockies. In the entire world, the Pikes Peak Highway is one of a handful of two-lane roads that will take you to the summit of such a massive mountain elevation. Named for the American explorer Zebulon Pike, who failed to summit the mountain in 1806, founded in 1916 by Spencer Penrose, who widened the original carriage path, the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb is one of America's oldest auto racing events, second only to the Indy 500. For one week every summer, a global contingent of race car drivers descend upon the mountain to challenge the 12-mile road in a flat-out sprint to the top. The hill climb is a world-renowned attraction for racers from every discipline of motorsport. They come here from near and far to challenge their will, their skill, and their machines in a death-defying ascent for the truly brave at heart. Pikes Peak was always a race that I was aware of. I mean, it was a race that me and my dad watched on TV when I was a kid, but it wasn't something that we considered because of the fact that it was either all dirt or partially dirt. Well, Big Red was built originally by Bill Osborne to do the open road races on pavement and run in high speeds. And for so many years, Pikes Peak was dirt. And it's just something we couldn't do. Certainly with Big Red, you know, we had gone to a lot of different events. I felt like we had kept meeting the challenges that we kind of put before us, and this one just felt like the next logical place to go and the next challenge to meet. The racing history of Big Red is really much longer than uh, most race cars. By the time 25, 30 years goes by on almost any race car, uh, it's either on the junk heap or it's in a museum. There's over 2,000 miles on Big Red going over 200 miles an hour. It's hard to say what impacts that's had on the frame, on, the, on, on, on all the parts of the car. I think back to when Bill built this car over 25 years ago, and I mean, all the things that he could have never imagined that we did with it, you know? I mean, I know, you know he imagined the La Carrera and where we started, but the Silver State and all the mile events, Bonneville, El Mirage, Virginia City Hill Climb, it's incredible. I, mean, I think when you guys finally rip this thing apart, there'll be a little bit of dirt, a little bit of gravel, a little bit of salt, like a little bit of uh, stuff from every place we've ever been with it. And uh, it's certainly a testament to just how long we've been running it. We've kept it in one piece, the fact that we even have a car to take back to strip down. A 69 Camaro wasn't ever expected to go 250 miles an hour either. We're yeah. talking about running Pikes Peak, and um, that would really be the next major thing we want to do. Right. For years, we talked about what kind of improvements we could make, and I guess getting it this far down to the frame, you know, we can really uh, take on some new things that we never did before. In 1989, it was uh, the cutting edge. Yes, it and was. now we're going to do this tear down to keep it the cutting edge in 2016. <laughs> This is really uh, the Big Red team's opportunity to upgrade the car and uh, bring in the modern parts that have been developed uh, since we've been racing the car. You know, what would my dad and Bill Osborne have done if they started the project today? Well, we've kind of decided that the, the car needs to be totally restored. First thing to do is just get the car tore all the way down and look at all the parts and pieces as we're taking them off and deciding what we are going to upgrade like shocks, we're going to upgrade the quality of shocks we have in the car, and brakes, and we're going to try to lighten the car up. One thing I want to make sure that we don't do is that when it's put back together, that we don't lose what Big Red is. 
With Big Red, we've always wanted to keep kind of the stock 69 Camaro look to it with a two inch cowl and a stock spoiler on the back. That's the ideal look that we've always tried to keep. There are certain things about Big Red that need to stay a certain way because of Big Red. Uh, we talked about carbon fiber fenders and it, it wouldn't be Big Red. Big Red is known for an all steel body. You start changing stuff like that, it just it slowly moves away from not being Big Red anymore. I think for all intents and purposes, when people see it when we're done, they may not see any difference at all. That's really the goal of the teardown for me, is to bring the car up to where she needs to be, and yet at the same time keep the car the same. So the crew is back at the shop, they're getting the car ready, but for me, I've never been to Pikes Peak, so it was time to go there and check it out. All right, so here we are, driving up Pikes Peak. Really beautiful up here. Doing a little reconnaissance to uh, check the course and uh, prepare for possibly uh, racing Big Red here. Really uh, a majestic race course, not the views that you usually see in California. This race course is a public highway, and so I'm taking a look at it, but you know, I gotta stay in my lane on my side. Gotta respect the speed limits somewhat anyway, and um, it won't be quite the experience of race day with Big Red here, but at least I get to take a look at it, uh, get an idea of uh, how tight the course is, um, you know, what the, what the uh, straightaways are like. This is a real technical, curvy course. One that's nice to be able to uh, get an early look at and, and get some idea for. This course will be a lot of fun for Big Red. Throwing it into the turns, really accelerating the car hard from turn to turn, but I'll need all of it. The braking, the handling, all the torque she's got. So uh, this will be, uh, be a lot of fun. I'm looking at this roadway and I'm used to racing this kind of stuff at Big Red because highways are a lot different than tracks. They'll camber off the wrong way at just the wrong moments and have a bump in the middle of the turn. There's a lot of blind turns. There's a lot of parts of the course that uh, you don't have to have memorized or you got to do it on the fly. So, um, you know, I'm thinking about how I want to be prepared for this race and how I need to get prepared for it. If this course was put on uh, flat ground, it would actually still be very technical. A lot of very tight turns, shifts, it would be a challenging course. But then when you put it up the side of a mountain and on the edge of sheer cliffs, it puts a whole nother dimension to it. It's something you really gotta be thinking about as a driver, how hard you're gonna push it. Coming up here to the top of the hill, um, what a view. This whole area is really dramatic at these altitudes. You really get a view of a landscape you don't normally get. You can see all the way to Kansas from here. Here we are at the top of Pikes Peak. This is where they race to. This is the finish up here. I look out over the cliff here, it really makes you think. When you're on the track and you're racing, that's all you think about. And that's all you should think about. But when you walk up to cliffs like this and you look over the edge, yeah, I guess you start to think about your own mortality. And I think a lot of people would say I'm nuts for racing up here. And looking over this cliff, I can kind of agree with them. But there's a reason why guys come up here and race. Guys come here to challenge themselves, and that's why we got to come here and race here. Want more adrenaline fueled action? Then hit the like, follow, and subscribe button. Well, come join us for heart-pounding thrills and high-speed excitement. Thank <laughs> you.